Hi, it's Bridget. Mm, welcome. <laughs> I'm going to do yawn oh, and stretch. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. I'm literally lying in bed and it is, I just woke up. <laughs> it is like 5.40 a.m. I think on October 1st. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Today is my psychic birthday. My psychic birthday. What is that? Well, by the time you see or listen, rather, to this podcast, I will have had, hopefully, had a live stream for my birthday online with you. So, a birthday. Let's have a conversation and feel into what that represents. Hmm. The first thing I felt when I woke up this morning was, oh my gosh, it's my birthday. And it made me feel happy in my heart and at peace. It made me feel a complete, contented, peace in my heart as though someone just tapped the front of my sternum on my chest and it opened wide like windows out into the new day like that like that sunny and bright and warm and happy Birthdays aren't always a joyful event or occasion. If you think about how it all starts, it is quite an intense experience, birthing into the world, coming into the world, however you arrived. It was through a woman, the body of a woman embodied, in that sacred container of a womb space, in that cuddled up sacred shelter, you were grown, created. And the intensity through which the transition occurs that causes you to come out of that safe and cozy warm space and be out into the great big world with all sorts of the sensory things. Temperature, lights, noises. So, so many things new. And we recognize the role of the mother, the woman who brings you into this world through her body. We recognize that intense challenge. I myself, as you probably know, I've had four children and I have had that birthing process four times. So when I think of birthdays, I think of many of those moments where it was a long day, a couple of days for two of them, it was three days of labor. And feeling so stubborn, stubborn and so committed to that process to get those people into this world or in medicine was just, you know, not going to work. I didn't, I didn't want that. I wanted to feel into and trust my body. And it was hard. It was incredibly painful. And at the moments when I thought my body just couldn't take any more pain, it's like I was at the top of this mountain. And when I released and relaxed into, let's be clear, no relaxing was happening during the birthing process, but surrendering into just almost almost at that point, just giving up, like, okay, God, please help me. 
I'm sure I've said that many times in the birthing process with a physical child and with my metaphysical work, for sure. God, help me, just help me, help me do this, help me through this, help me with this, please just help me, help me. Help me with this. <sighs> and so, for relatively healthy children, <laughs> more naturally into this world really really focused on my process and wanting to protect them what i was creating and what i'd created and keep them safe and cozy warm and fed and just loved and not at all contemplating what they might be experiencing as the one being birthed Sometimes when the word birthday comes up, I naturally or instinctively want to say birthing day, birthing day. Not, not just to acknowledge the mother that did the birthing part, but the human that came from the mother, you. You also did the birthing, it wasn't a one person show it was a dual process where two two were working toward a discovery of life an entrance into something new a birth or a rebirth. I believe astrologically right now, when you listen to this podcast, if you listen to it in October, early October of 2022, I believe there is still the Mercury retrograde. The way my technology has been acting up and such, I'm sure there is still <laughs> retrograde. However, it's a new day. Today is the 1st of October. I am recording this. Bringing in to the awareness, the opportunity to rebirth, to begin again to start new, to start fresh, to be renewed, rebirth. So often in, in this life journey, at least for myself, I can say I have had so, so many opportunities to rebirth. It is painful. It is hard. It is insurmountable at times. It feels lonely and totally isolating at times. And other times it feels like I'm rebirthing myself on a stage where people are watching me. That's not just because of YouTube, my friends. It's not just because I'm on YouTube. It is quite literally because for some, some massive change process you might be going through, Many, many people might be seeing you do that. If you're going through a relationship change, if you've been married for 20 years and you're changing that status, your friends, your family, things will change. Things are changing likely for you. And in those kinds of situations, I will share that it feels worse for you to anticipate and to overinflate. It's natural. Other people's tendency to care as deeply as you think they do. Oh, 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 people have opinions. And especially now, people will share their opinions. We forgot how to filter. 
everybody's walking around without their little filters on their brains to be nice sometimes, right? Especially if they're close to you, they think they are able to just say what they think. Sometimes you ask, though, be fair, you ask for advice, but um, it's just opinions of others, not the person that's living your life. That would be you in your shoes. So doing your public rebirth in a process like that, you will get bombarded by opinions, but oftentimes it's from well-intended people. So if you can feel into their intention, you will feel their personal fear of rebirth. They're not stepping into change. In fact, you might be representing or presenting their worst fear. So for example, if you're going through a change process, a rebirth, where you have maybe gone to college, gone back to school, gotten some kind of a new skill or a new training in a new area, and you are stepping back into the work world in a new way, you are rebirthed into a new career, which can be scary, especially later on in life. It used to be anyway. Now it seems like that's the normal thing, which is great. Let's make change and doing different things throughout our life normal. That's a good thing. We want people who are engaged and interested, not people who are dead on the job. And yet that other person that has loved you and known you forever, it seems forever and not forever maybe, they might be giving you all sorts of opinions, projecting fear onto you because they have it, not because you have it. Do you see? So when people give you opinions or they give you advice, it's from their perspective. And so, so often it's about avoiding pain. It's about avoiding the hard work that you've already been through, let's be clear, or you're in the throes of it now. So you're already in the process, usually. Generally speaking, you're in the process or you've already decided to go deeper into that process before you even shared that with anyone. And so well-intended, well-meaning friends and family and people will give you advice and opinion. And just remember, you don't have to take any of it into action. You can listen and see that what they are sharing with you is love, not an action plan. You quite literally could just listen to them like Charlie Brown. Do you remember Charlie Brown? Like that. And it's okay. Because probably nine times out of 10, when someone gives you advice or their opinion, it's probably worth about 1%. Ooh, does that seem mean to say? Oh, I don't mean it to be mean. My intention is not to be, don't listen to anybody ever. My intention is use your brain, use your level of discernment in your heart, and don't over amplify other people's views. Don't over amplify or over put place more importance on what's outside of you than what is inside, because what is inside is what is birthing. You take care of that birthing baby within you not the outside person that thinks they know better. They don't know your body. They don't know your inner process. They don't know your wherewithal. They don't know truly the depths of what you've been through and what you go through on a daily basis inside. They don't know. And whenever you take undertake a change or you're moving through a transformational time, other people cannot understand truly the depths and yet they can still show up and support you and you can still gain and feel the love of others around you. A hundred percent you can and you should. Women don't birth children alone for the most part. There might be some tribes or some circumstances in which that occurs. But we were not meant to be alone in our birthing process. And neither are you, my dear, you who are listening to this, going through some changes in your life. Oh, God, yes, goddess, 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 I feel you, my dear. I feel you. 
I feel you. Ah, you are brave. You may not feel it, but you have a courage that transcends the temporary suffering you're in. Oh, I know you're going to say to me, Bridget, it doesn't feel temporary. Oh, honey, I know it doesn't feel temporary. But one thing I can tell you about suffering, <clears throat> it is not meant to be your identity. Hear me, hear me, hear me out. <clears throat> I said, you are not meant to live in pain. You were never meant to take on suffering as an identity. And it is not the only part of pain, transition, change. It comes with pain in the form of struggle. Yes, struggle is natural. It gains new skills, new ability to trust in yourself, which is the most profound thing that comes through a rebirth is the trusting in yourself, leaning into the process of the change, but not, not to become the pain. It is not your new identity. It seems like it feels like it's going to swallow you up and eat you whole in it and be the way forever. I know it feels like that, but just like a storm, it passes. It moves through, energy moves. Pain is intended to move, not to stay. And even if you have suffered an unbelievable, unbearable physical or emotional pain that you've carried with you your entire lifetime, there are layers upon layers of that that have cleared and moved through and breathed out and shifted and become integrated into medicine for you to recognize the love and the power of love that was there before and is there now and will be there after all of the changes you move through in your lifetime, regardless of whether, whether they are directly related to the pain cause or not. You have power within you, the power to rebirth. And I used to think, let me just tell you, I have sat in circles with priestesses and goddesses and the energetics of incredible, incredibly divine women. And the term rebirth is used. It is used with the intent to understand, to shake the womb space of earth to recognize the constant steadfast power of the embodiment that we are. It doesn't matter if you're in a feminine body or not. You are one with the goddess energy. The divine feminine flows through you as much as the divine masculine and you are the sacred union of the two. Yeah, I'm gonna get a little woo woo here because it's important. And it's beautiful. <laughs> it's part of who I am. It's part of my medicine in the world. And they use the terms often in these beautiful circles of empowerment. The term of rebirth. And it early, early on, it bothered me because I physically had birthed children. I physically knew the pain and the struggle and the intense love and devotion it took to move through the process of the birth, to feel everything like I was going to be led to the edge of death. I thought my body would rip open quite, quite savagely just to bring a life into the world, just to bring life, but for to bring only to bring, to have the honor to bring life into the world. I knew how precious and powerful that was. So when someone said rebirth, I thought, hmm, do you know what you're talking about? Do you know? 
and the resounding answer from your spirit guides, your spiritual support team, especially the feminine deities. Uh, yes, yes, we do. We use the word with intent and profound meaning. And that is a message <laughs> for all of us today. Birthdays. might be a day on the calendar to pause to celebrate all the progress you have made as far as you have come now. And you have not come this far to only come this far. I know, I know, it's a famous quote. I'm not sure who said it. It's true. You have other birthdays in the future, other birthing experiences, other rebirths. You will, you will into the depths of which you actually remember the day or the time of the year or the season for which the change occurred. That's most often likely, I believe, is to remember by the season, what was the weather like? What did it look like outside? What time of day was it? Those kinds of things. And often change doesn't happen in one day or two days or three days. It happens over time, like a season or a year of your life or a time of life, a block of time of life. And so today I remember that time. It was fall, it was early autumn, it was autumn, like so autumn in Minnesota. And I will share my story. I will share it. I'll try to share it on my live stream. You'll see it here on Above Life channel. And the reflection of 18 years ago. <laughs> I'm an adult now. <laughs> in my psychic terms, my intuitive terms, I'm an adult now. But to celebrate then, in some way, to acknowledge, at least acknowledge how far you've come, how much you've grown, even if it's not it doesn't feel good and you're not quite there yet and you feel like you've made more of a mess than anything, just remember when you re renovate a house, when you're renovating a room, especially like a kitchen or something like that or a bathroom, oh my goodness, everything is so disrupted for such a long time until it gets put back together and that is amazing and incredible. Don't stop in the middle of the process. Don't stop. That's like you wouldn't stop in a renovation. You won't stop and a rebirth. Don't stop your process. Honor where you've been, honor where you are. And then when you get to a point where you can look back and really see, oh my goodness, look at, <laughs> look at how much has changed. <laughs> oh my, oh. <sighs> I definitely need coffee this morning. I suppose I'll have to get out of bed to get it, but it's way too cozy here, <laughs> too cozy. And it's cold in this room right now, it's chilly. I'll have to grab a robe and head upstairs and make some pumpkin cake latte coffee. <laughs> That's in my espresso. I just tried it in my Nespresso. I just tried the pumpkin cake latte again. It's good. That's pretty good. Yeah. I'm embracing the season of autumn the best I can. I'm a summer baby, you know. I love summer. Oh, I love the sun. And today on my birthday, my psychic birthday, I'm 18. I'm an adult. I'm going to do adult things today, adulting things today. Yes, I am. And... It's going to be beautiful. Yeah, it's going to be 70 degrees. That's beautiful. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for you. Thank you for listening. Have, have courage. Okay, have courage. You're changing or you're contemplating a change or you just came through a big one. Take a break, take a rest, but do not stop. Don't stop evolving and growing and changing. That's what life's about. 
It is about these rebirthing opportunities and the times in between. Live your life, live it. You are meant to be. You are meant to be. This is Bridget. Thank you for listening to Sunday Morning Coffee, my podcast with Bridget. I hope I've inspired your spirit today, filled you with some hope, and encouraged you to live your life. It's your life after all. And you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for listening.